No. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, no, no, I was just saying, I mean, that's the reason that Ron Paul never ran as an independent. Right. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So. And that's why he remained in R, and that's why his son's coming into the R's, and that's why, uh, although I disliked them and hadn't voted for them in a long time, the way it stands today, they're our option over the socialists that John correctly wants to run over in Ann Arbor, and I might do the same damn thing here at State College when I start seeing my cheese roll off my cracker because they're just equally as thick. Well, and, and here's the problem with this whole scenario. Whether Ron Paul would have been elected president or not, it's the entire damn Congress underneath him that is rotten to the core. Yes. And, and this problem is not going to be fixed from the top down in Washington, D.C., I'm all for bulldozing the entire city, pushing it into the Atlantic, because we all know what the what the real course of action needs to be, and it needs to be the states, not the federal government. We have to disband these critters and get rid of them all. They flip the form of government. They have totally destroyed the form of government. So they have become, um, how should I say, um, non-issue. As uh, as Richard Mack said, uh, they are no consequence any longer. All right, Tom, thanks for your call. Appreciate it. We'll break 90 seconds. We'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Second hour of the National Intel Report on this Tuesday, 17 November 09. And, um, hmm, Bob, I'm sitting here reading your newsletter during the break here. What is the supplementary financing program? What, what, what is that? Well, it's something that the government uses as a catch-all. And uh, they met out money to those they deem necessary. And, of course, they won't tell you uh, who they're giving that money to. And, of course, it's the uh, transnational conglomerates like General Electric, and I'm surprised Coca-Cola hasn't got some too, and uh, and also the the bankers and Wall Street and the insurance companies. You know, most people have overlooked the fact that the insurance companies uh, have received enormous amounts of money. Uh, seven of them, seven of them got an average of about two billion dollars each. And one of them, Hartford Financial, got an extra billion from the state of Connecticut. And I think they got $3 billion from the Fed. So this is the, si the kind of thing that they do. And, uh, Bob, these insurance companies, now people that aren't in the insurance business, um, they think the insurance company, oh, uh, MetLife or Allstate or whatever, they collect premiums and they stash that money away, and that's on interest-bearing accounts, and not everybody's going to die in a house fire or an auto accident, or they're not going to have to pay this or that. So it's the accumulated wealth of all the people paying the premiums based on strictly numbers, in other words, payouts versus pay-in. Uh, folks, if, if you think that's what an insurance company does with the money that you send them, you'd better think again. Bob, uh, I, I would hasten to say that they put in for bailout money because where do the insurance companies, where did they invest the money uh, that they take in? And they invest that if they are a stock company in things like occasionally some bonds and hedge funds and real estate, both residential and commercial and land. Mm -hmm which is illiquid, and they buy stocks. <laughs> and annuities do the same thing. Mutual insurance companies, they must put their money into bonds, so they're quite a bit safer. I have been telling people in stock insurance companies who have cash values to take them out and drop the policy. If they still need... And incidentally, I had an insurance license for 25 years. Um, if they still need coverage, they can use level term, which is a form of pure insurance. And uh, in annuities, just take the money out and put them in gold and silver 
related assets. And I've been saying this for some time. And most people don't know that insurance companies are in serious trouble, just like the stockbroker firms and the banks. So it might be one fine day when you go to put in a claim because your house burned down and you think, oh my goodness, I'm in retirement age. Thank God I had an insurance policy on my house. Well, you better check. Maybe your... you don't have them because some of them are going to go under. That's what, exactly my point. And if you're thinking, well, I still have retirement, you may want to check into that as well. we'll... Get ready for Real Talk Radio. You're listening to the National Intel Report with your host, John Statmiller. Bob, you said about your uh, supplemental financing program, the transference of debt from banks, uh, Wall Street and insurance to the taxpayer. Even worse is the Fed's ability to pay interest on the money banks have borrowed from them at higher rates, of course allowing the taxpayer to give free money to the banks, which, of course, is insane. They're not loaning any money to anybody out there, so they're going to loan it to themselves. Now, even you said even if the reserves were drained, it would have to encompass at least a two-year period. They propose to remove trillions of dollars from the economy, and even being um, left, uh, I guess, with trillions in the economy after the general withdrawal of the funds, Unfortunately, as this occurs, more than 2,000 banks will have gone out of business. How many, how many banks have gone belly up so far? Does anybody know? Well, this year it's um, 123, I believe. Yes. Was and uh, there will probably be 140 or 50 before the year's out. And next year they'll lose 1,000, and the year after they'll lose maybe 1,500 to 2,000. And it's a consolidation process in the nationalization of the banks, which was deliberately caused by the fiasco and the bubble of the residential and now commercial real estate. They're seizing and, top uh, banks now. Pardon me? They're seizing top banks, banks that got top money. Yeah, there was just one in California the other day, yeah. wasn't it, Robbie? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, that's why, you know. And this is going to go on and on. It's a consolidation process, and somewhere between 32 and 4,200 banks will go under. Amazing. Dave in Canada. Hello, Dave. How are you doing? Great. Hi. I'm just doing great tonight. How are you, gentlemen? I'm doing well. Excellent. Look, to add a little bit more fire, firewood to this fire, of Rob Kirby. If anybody knows Rob Kirby, he's a triple-A personality. He dots his I's and crosses his T's. He would never say anything to jeopardize his credibility or his position. But what scares me more than anything else of that sort is you gentlemen have been ringing the fire alarm for years, weeks, months about buying precious metals. What is going to happen, Bob? When the uh, tungsten fool's gold really hits home, uh, the governments and the banks are going to be grabbing all the silver, all the gold, and leave the little people out in the cold? Well, that's a possibility because they're going to have to deliver against the uh, uh, false gold, so to speak. And uh, the contracts have to be fulfilled if the uh, sellers or uh, have... Uh, still have assets left. Uh, you know, my guess is the U.S. government's probably behind this, but there's a lot of other players, and they all coordinate together. And this exposure is mind-blowing for them uh, because it's, it's taking a great deal of supposed gold off the market. Well, I mean, all those it. bars that whoever has them all has have nothing. Well, and, and if they can't if they can't retrieve uh, more gold for the gold that they're supposed to have, then they're broke, they're out of luck, they've lost their investment, and all they can do is sue uh, if the entity is still in business. And of course, it's the U.S. government. The U.S. government has to prove any approve any lawsuit filed against it. And what they would say, uh, we won't approve the lawsuit. And so the people who were the buyers of the gold, who got delivery, uh, they're, they're tough out of luck. But the, the major point is 
that that gold doesn't exist. And it's going to tighten up the market, and gold and silver are going to go crazy. Exactly. And when gold and silver go crazy, and the governments are grabbing it, it's no different than the 77 when uh, gold dropped from 650 down to 300 Thirty-three dollars on silver down to ten seventy. You couldn't buy it at those prices. They snatched it in. They wouldn't release it out on the street. I'm afraid that this stuff is going to happen prior to it, and that's what Rob Kirby is saying. The second shoe to drop is these shorts are going to get their heads handed to them, and nobody, no little people, uh, are going to be able to exchange any sort of paper for any gold or silver, and that's the scary part.